Okay, so welcome everyone to uh, Introduction to SQL Lite. I am Chang Yixuan, so we'll just get started since it's, since it's seven. <coughs> so I'm actually a JC2 student from Diamond High and I take H2 computing. Yeah, the last bit at the bottom is, is supposedly for some students, we're expecting more students. So that's a different, uh, different event that we're organizing also. So we're supposed to do some outreach, but well, we'll skip that. So anyway, we'll give you all some background info on what SQLite is. SQLite 3 is actually, uh, actually stands for SQLite version 3. It's what we call, it's what we call a relational database management system. And uh, it's file based. So uh, any, okay. Hi, welcome. So, um, okay, so we'll start off with file based cause relational database management system is something more to do with theory. Like, the reason SQLite is file based, right, is that typically when you imagine a database, you imagine this big like Google server with all sorts of like big machines and all blinking light, flashing stuff. When in reality, SQLite does not require this. You can actually run everything from a USB thumb drive. It's a folder that you can just copy and paste. It contains both the structure for your database as well as the data stored in it. Okay, so we move on to theory. This is uh, what we call a relational database management system. So uh, is everyone familiar with what a tuple or a list or array is? Not really? Okay, so imagine you have uh, items on a, items on a, like items in a row, right? So you have like this marker, this bottle of water, and this uh, paper clip, right? So in such a row, uh, each of these items represent a unit of data. What this data is may be very different. It can be a simple, say, a number. It could be a, a text. It could be a picture. It could be an audio file. That's not really relevant. But the way an array works is that it will give each of these an index number. So this is, say, item 1. This is item 2. This is item 3. But the unique thing about Python is that uh, in an array, the index number actually starts from 0. So it, while this is item number one, right? In Python, this would be item with the index zero. This item with the index uh, one, this item with the index two. Okay. <coughs> so how a relational database management system is that, imagine a lot of these rows, right, stacked on top of each other. So one row by a row, like a burger. So you realize that, hey, as you look vertically down the row, right, each column would actually be similar. Like the characteristics would be similar. So when you look like that, right, down this column, all of these are bottles of water. Like, they may be, they may be different bottles of, like, they may be different bottles, but they are all bottles, right? So that's what we call an attribute. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, we'll actually explore how this works in a while. It's like, you know, like Excel sheet, but it's like Google sheet slash Excel sheet, but it's like compute, because, but you can use it in computing, your coding, and it's, Cool, cause well, computing is cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, actually, actually, if you if you start visualizing your data like how you would in an Excel sheet, it will actually help you a lot for this. And we'll actually, be using an Excel sheet to visualize our data later. So uh, on to what SQL like uh, the data types on SQL. So uh, the first data type is called null, which is equivalent to the non in Python. Are you all both familiar with Python? Okay. Yeah, so like, you know, none in Python. Yeah, null is basically that it just defines it as completely nothing. Then there's integer, which is a whole number, similar to Python. Real, which is equivalent to your float in Python, which is just a number with a decimal point and digits behind it. Text is just a string, so any alphabet, alphanumerical. And block, which is what we call data stored as is. So imagine you have a picture, right? Uh, a picture is a, it's like, it, it contains a series of like zeros and ones, right? So a block basically stores this zero and one in the exact same sequence without doing anything to it. So even, okay, so even like your text messages, right? Your simple A is actually a combination of like binary. So like a, a string of zero and ones will actually tell you that, hey, this is supposed to be uh, A. But when you store it as a block, right? It will just store this zero to one, this string of zero and ones and display as such. Then last but not least, we come to Booleans. So if, okay, so does everyone know how Boolean work? Like true and false? In Python, true, false, right? Yeah, so uh, similar, this is Boolean is basically the true, false data type. 
in SQLite, a boolean does not the boolean data type does not actually exist because uh, well it, it just doesn't exist. However, we can actually have a work around this by using uh, by using zero and one to stand for false and true. So like if you want to store something as a false, you just store it as zero, and when you read it out, you read zero equals to false. Yeah. Then uh, okay, we'll move on to keys. So a key is actually a field in your table. So imagine your Google like Google Excel sheet, right? Any column, any like any cell in there is a key. And when we are talking about say primary key, right, is that a primary key is basically any okay, you'll be looking at table, right? A, a primary key is a key that will be unique, it will only appear once in the entire table. So that's how you know you can reference each row particularly. So uh, imagine I have ten, 10 entries, right? Let's say these are all uh, entries uh, of a guy named John, right? Okay. So if you want to identify uh, a particular aspect about John, right, you need to reference it by which particular row. So it will be good to give every row an index number so that you can like say that, hey, I want row 10 of data, like the data in row 10. Okay, a composite key is what happens when your primary key is actually split into multiple attributes. So like two different, two different columns will make up your primary key. The reason for this is that sometimes you may not be a sometimes your sometimes your data may be maybe uh what is it called? Sometimes your, your data in your table may not be so clear cut that uh okay, like it may be referencing stuff from other places to like like maybe sometimes it's not as clear cut as your name. Maybe it's uh it's uh something it's records about something a particular person did on a particular day. So in this case, your primary key will actually be like what day the person did on and what the person is, like who the person is. So that's a, what's a comp composite key? Don't worry, we'll actually go into this later. A foreign key is basically like, imagine you have an Excel sheet, right? You have multiple sheets of Excel and a foreign key is basically using one data value from one table to reference to another table. Uh, typically, you'll be using a primary key in one table to reference to another one, but not, that's not always the case. La. Okay, so now we will mo be moving on to live coding. Uh, everyone is here on the slides, right? You can just click on uh, this first tool. The last one is actually uh, our backup data. So in case anything goes horribly wrong with our database, we can get a brand new fresh copy from the third link. But just click this and click this and it will bring you to uh, what we call a Microsoft Azure as well as a Google Sheet. Hi, welcome. Yeah, we have started. Yeah. So just give me a heads up when you all are there. You'll be looking at something like this. So I'll require you all to sign in to or slash make an account for notebook.azer. It should not ask you for a credit card. If it asks you for a credit card, you're on the wrong page and just raise your hand and we'll come and help out. Your second link is something that looks like this. So at, at bottom, you'll realize there are four, four sheets, right? The first sheet is the only sheet in what we call baddata.db. Because this is a database that is meant to illustrate bad examples that we're doing during live coding. So the data here is actually just spread out in uh, your next tree, which is contained inside, uh, contained inside uh, store, store database.db. I will just, I'll just quickly revert <laughs> things to how it was uh, before we started. Yeah, because I had a session yesterday night and we actually did some editing to a database to illustrate. Uh. So yeah, when you have logged in, uh, just clone this to your own folder and you have an exact copy of all of this. Then you will want to create a new notebook. Uh, for the newcomers, the slides are over there. The Wi-Fi password over there. Yeah, the slides are there. Uh, yeah. The 
three facilitators can get ready to move around and help out. Just look out for stuff like syntax error and that kind of stuff. Lah. Who? Oh. Okay, so is everyone has everyone gotten their um, Microsoft Azure notebooks open? We we'll just wait for the newcomers, lah. So is everyone able? Okay, yeah. For the newcomers, right? When you're at the slides, right? Just go to slide eleven. We'll be we are now at live coding, so we're starting at live coding. The first one is a, a Azure notebook, which is based off Jupyter. So it's just an online platform for you to run Python code. Yeah, and the second one is a Google Sheet that will help us visualize what is going on in our database. Yeah, when you have opened your Azure notebook, right? You want to sign in. Uh, you want to clone this database and like uh, clone this segment and uh, go to yeah, clone this stuff and create your own account slash login. Yeah. Just let me know when you are done. Now. I will walk around. Yeah, the password is LLI Lifelong Learning Institute four zero eight six zero one. Everyone ready? So everyone sign here? Oh. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, just log in here. Yeah, just at slide, just at 11. Yeah, the first and the second link. Here. Okay. Yeah. Your okay, we can actually use this or you want to give it another name. This one. Yeah, this one is a blank it's a brand new notebook on Python 3.6. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to clone this over, so you just press clone. And you know, actually okay, actually you want to clone the entire folder. Yeah, because the database is actually pre-built. Uh, yeah, this session is mostly about learning how to read, but I'll just briefly touch on how to create a database from scratch right at the start. Yeah, right. yeah you want to sign in and create an account, then do cloning. Yeah. Y'all can take a look. Okay, so the okay, so okay, I'll just go to the front end. 
so for okay so actually uh that you can open you can open a 16.3 ws which stands for march a 16 march workshop and that will give you a brand new notebook at the same time you want to open this uh workshop code right workshop code notebook because that's where our answer sheet is so that's where we'll be basing our structure for from today i just coded that beforehand so in case anything goes horribly wrong that's what we'll be referring to murphy's law So is everyone okay if I start? And I, I would just okay. I just assume that we are ready to start. Okay. <clears throat> so today, right, our live coding segment, we will go through a uh, total of six scenarios. Three technically is a tr repeat of two, uh, three scenarios, but we'll be tackling these three scenarios in a different fashion due to a difference in our database that we're using. So when you first look at your database, uh, our bad data database contains a single table like this. So there's some issue with this, like uh, one is that it limits how many items a single person can buy on a day. So this is basically a database containing orders in a, in a say supermarket. And you just realize that you only have three items so you can't actually have four, more than four items. Like you can't buy more than four items and the record, the, the, the database cannot record that. So that's an issue. So uh, we'll just get started. First, the first line of code you want to do when you're running SQLite is that you want to import the modules from SQLite 3. The reason for this is that Python actually, uh, Python is flexible that it allows you to import code from that other people have used, provided you have installed it. And since you're on an online service, they actually have it pre-installed. So you can just import the module and we'll be using all these preview functions to do our SQLite. Then the next one you want to do is you want to create a connection to your database. So in, that, in this case, we assign the connection to this variable called con. So uh, connect a bad data. Yeah, because yeah, you want it to be exact spelling, so capitals B and capital D. Huh? Zoom in. Better? Is it big enough? Okay. Yeah. So after you have created your connection, right, you want to create what we call a cursor. So a cursor is the equivalent of your mouse, and it is the thing that will actually carry out all your commands. So imagine each of your commands to your database like a double click or a click on your mouse. So you want to, you want to assign it to this uh, variable. Okay, technically your variables can be different name, but typically we go by a fixed name so that it's easier for us to use. Some people use C-U-R for cur, like cursor, so cur. So I, but I personally, I prefer to use C. So C dot, ex C dot, uh, con dot cursor function. Yeah, like that. And you run this. So on here, you just control enter and you run this. Hold on, it's not running. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna restart my kernel. Okay, it's not running, which is an issue, because if you don't create the connection to your database, well, you can't really run your code. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll just go on with scenario one, but assuming it doesn't work, does everyone have, uh, does everyone has uh, what we call a Python, Python, Python idle installed on their computer? Right? Do you all, do you all have Python idle on your computers? Yeah, okay. 
Okay. Uh, can, huh? We can try that. Code. Oh, we try. Hey, Yiyang, can we use code collab? Does it have SQL like? Wow. Which one? Which one? Collaboratory is Google service. Because it's not, it's not running. The code is not running. Shift enter, but it's supposed to run out with a number, right? It should show. It should show the star, but it's not. Right? I can't tell also. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It works. It works. Everyone. Good. Yeah. Network problem. So in case you face something like similar to what the screen has shown just now, so just try to refresh your page. Yeah. So yeah. So like, if you run it, there should be a number here, lah. Right. So we have run it once and we created our connection. So now what we want to do is that we'll be actually moving on to scenario one, right? So you want to see what this guy John has bought on day one, as well as how much he has spent in total on day one, right? So in your database visualizer, you can actually go and find like, hey, this guy John on day one, so what has he bought? He bought four bananas and two cucumbers, right? So now we want to query from the database to see this like through code. So first of all we want okay, so the way uh, a query works in Py like Python slash SQL like is that it will ask the database for information and it will return the information uh as a row. And this row will actually be in a, what we call a tuple. So you all know what a tuple is, right? Tuple slash array. Yeah. So it just come in an array so you actually have to unpack that. So the first one is that we'll just call it uh, we'll just call it data. So we just see the execute. So we are using our cursor to execute a query, which is select. Okay. In this case, we are trying to look for item one, item quantity one, unit one, price one, item two, quantity two, item unit price three, eight two, item three, quantity three, unit price three. Since that's gonna take a very long time to copy, uh, to to write, so you can actually just come here and just copy this part, right? We just copy copy the headers cause well I don't really like to type the headers this copying the headers right so these are just the headers the different headers and then after copying the headers you want to tell the you want to tell your code where to find these headers in so what table so from select these headers from the table original data exact spelling including the underscore so from original origin original data. Okay, so you have now you told you have now told your uh, uh code where to get the data from, but you want to specify in this case you want to specify that you want John and on day one, right? So you want to tell it where your where your customer name. So customer name equals to uh, John and because it's a uh, two conditions at once and they equals to one now I end it you want to end this with a uh, with a uh, semicolon and then a uh, uh, double quote to indicate that this is the end of your command Yeah. Okay. So after this, right, you want to uh, create a comma because you want to, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, this will work. So we can actually run this and we will just print out our data to see what we get. So you print out, your, you, you print out the variable that contains your query from your database, right? And you realize that, hey, it shows you this very weird number and stuff and it doesn't actually give you what you want. The reason for that uh, is like, okay, so basically exactly why it does it like that, you, I don't exactly know, but the way to convert this string of weird thing into what you want as a array, right, is to have the same, is to allocate, is to allocate whatever you have queried with this thing called fetch one or slash fetch all. <coughs> 
So right now, if we press, if we have done, we have manipulated the data using fetch one, and we print our data, it will show us that, it will show this thing in a, in a tuple where banana is your first item, four, four bananas the quantity and the unit price as the third one. Then cucumber two, and point five and none 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 none. Reason being that the last three I say none, it's empty, it's blank, right? Okay, now. Sometimes you will be looking for information where it will return you more than one row, right? So imagine I don't put the condition day one, I just search for John. Oh, okay. Actually, John has only bought items on day one. Imagine I'm looking for Steven. Steven bought, day, bought stuff both on day one and day two, right? So if I don't specify what day, it will actually return me two row. So in this case, right? So in th those cases, you want to use patch all. And you can print your data to realize that it's slightly different. Because in this case, it will present to you your data in an, it will give you an array of arrays, right? So if you, so in this case, right, let's say we want to obtain uh, the, the word banana, right? That data, right? You actually want to, you, like, okay. So if you use fetch one, right? If we use fetch one, the data with the index zero, right, will give you banana, right? But if I use, data fetch all right and my first one would be just this tuple this array cause in a 2d array is arrays of array so your first array is this this array so if you want to do this if you want to get the same banana from this you want to specify then in this array i want position zero so it's two zero next to next but since we know that so for simplicity sake since we know that we'll only get one data from this we just want to use fetch one Yeah, if you, yeah, actually, yeah. Okay. Cannot. Ah, uh, you guys find that? Cannot. Okay, so we'll move on. Okay, so now that, now that, uh, okay, fetch one, actually fetch one, fetch one, print data. Okay, so now that you have this, right, what we want to do is that we actually want to append, uh, we actually want to create three columns. One is your item name. So uh, P name for product name, full cats. Uh, product name equals to a blank array. Your quantity is also a blank array. And your price is also a blank array. So in this case, what you want to do is, uh, you want to run a for you want to run a for loop for the for the length of this right. So you want for i in range uh, zero length of your array, which is length of data, and in intervals of three, because you know that it's actually it's actually repeating three columns. Like you have three items, so you are repeating it three times, right? So in this, you want to append your name, append data i right and then you want to append into quantity append data i plus one because i then you plus one so this will give you a quantity so for the last one your unit price you want to append i plus two data i plus two okay so at the end of this you can actually take a quick look at and look at uh how your how each of these arrays look like at the end of it. Okay, so is everyone following so far? <laughs> I 
Are you fine up here? Okay, okay. So the way fetch one works, right, is that because you know that it will only, you know that in, in the particular case that you're searching, it will only give you one row, right? So you just use fetch one. But sometimes you will have multiple instances, like multiple rows, right? So the way fetch, uh, fetch all works is that it will give each of these rows an index. So each of these array would be an index. Yeah. Okay, so fetch, okay, the difference between fetch, okay, I'll, I'll just reiterate. The difference between fetch all and fetch one, right, is that uh, when, you fetch, when you fetch one, you're telling your, you're telling your uh, code that there will only be one row, that the data, that there's only one row where the data is correct. So in this case, you can actually tell, your, your data will actually, your code can actually know that, hey, I don't need to put this row inside another array because there's no need for that. But if you have multiple rows, right, then you need to differentiate between which row the data is from. Yeah. 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 Okay, then I'll then we'll move on. Okay. So now that you have now that you have your data in three arrays, right? We can then run through each array. Like we can actually just run through each array. Because we know that for the same index, right, the data is corresponding. Because you know that for the first one, it, for banana, you know the guy has bought four of it and the price of it is 0 0.2. So for i in range, range <coughs> man of P name, right? Because you just want to run it for the number of times in this. For I in range P, P name, you want to check first if whether, whether or not uh, your data is none, whether your P name. There you pass. Okay. Yeah. Alternatively, you can use like not equal, la, but for simplicity. Yeah, okay. Let's just, let's just do that actually. So if, your, if the data in your P name is not equals to none, you can, then you will run your code. But if it's none, right, there's, there's no point adding it to what you're doing. La, right? So if your P name is not equals to one, first you want to print. You, you want to print, uh, okay. There's a, there's a specific, uh, there's, it's, it's just to make it look nice. This part is just to make it look nice. So you can actually copy this, copy this over. This is just so that when your item, your name comes out, it will come out nicely as a item name something, then a quantity something, unit price something. It's just formatting. So uh, this one, change it to P name. And unit price, we change it to price. Yeah. OK. And uh, OK. Before we start, right, since we, in this scenario, we're actually looking for how much money this guy has spent. So we want to create a sum variable before the for, for loop with the, with the value 0, assuming that he has, he has bought nothing yet. So for every item, we know that your sum will equal to whatever, is pre whatever he has already spent plus your quantity, quantity i, multiplied by your, your price. Right? So at the end of this, you can just print out. Uh, yeah, you can just print out all of this and print out sum two. Then make it. Can you do anything for me? Yeah. Then you can just print your your total spend like that. This print is just to make it just give give it a gap. So when you run it. Oh, okay.
Okay, let's encounter it then. for I ah for I in range P ten. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Ah, p name i. If p name, if the p name i is not equals to none, then you will run it. Cause you want to look in each each index of p name to see whether it's i. I missed out that, so you just check whether the entire column exists or not. So, so far is everyone following? Any questions you can just raise your hand and ask. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. This eye? Okay, is, oh, which eye? This one? Okay, this one is that, this one is just to tell you to look inside your P name array, what index to look at. Because if your index is, okay, so we are running, so, so for each of these, right, we are running down this, uh, okay. Previously, we actually printed out our, we actually printed out our P name, right? Hold on. So we printed out our P name, and, and we know that it looks like this, right? So basically, in this for loop, you are looking at the each index, you are looking at your banana, and how many bananas he has bought, and what price the banana is, to find your sum. But if you come to here, you come to your third index, or actually index two, and you realize none. If you have none times none or none times anything, it doesn't work because it's not uh, it's not something you can multiply. None, yeah, right. So you to avoid that index error, right? You want to tell it that if this if this is a none, naturally there's nothing below because there's no item. So you just skip that. You will not process that. Yeah. Okay. So if everyone is fine with that, we will move on. Okay. So everyone's fine? If everyone's fine, I'll move on to scenario two. Okay. Yeah. So on scenario two, this guy called Peter, uh, on day three, this guy called Peter comes to the store and buys one banana. Now we look at our data and we realize here's an issue. Peter does not exist as a person, right? And neither, and neither, uh, yeah, and neither does day three occur. So in this case, it's a brand new record. We'll be using, up, uh, we'll be using the insert function. Okay. So we just insert a new cell below for a new segment of code. And we'll have a. Uh, okay, so this one is actually very easy. We will just create and we'll just create an array where our values are what we want to append into. So yes, arr equals to on day three. So day three, item banana, and uh, quantity equals to one. So you want to you want to execute this query, right? Because this is an inserting query, so you don't actually need to assign it to a variable. So you can just see dot execute insert into which table? Because there's only one table, so original data. Uh, original data, and you want to specify what columns to import it into. So in this case, it is a uh, day. Oh yeah, and you want to add a price. You want to add a unit price, which is point two lah. Yeah, because the uh, banana is point two, so you want to add your day. Oh, you want to add your day. You want to add your item one, your quantity one, quantity one, and your unit price one, right? This and what values do you want to add? You want to add values. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Because four values, so four question marks. Same thing, semicolon, same thing, semicolon to denote the end, end of your query. And then you put a co comma, then you, tell the co then you tell the code what array to look at 
so that it can, yeah lah, so you just arrange. Then you just, at the end of this, you want to, first of all, you want to ensure that your data is, co is recorded. So you, so you do con.commit, and you just, oh wait, hold on, yeah. And you just run your, run your stuff. So now this has not shown any errors. So one way to see whether it has actually worked is to just download your database, right? And you just open it and take a look. So in your database, you realize that, yeah, Peter has been added. Oops. Um. Oh yeah, hold on. We actually want to, we actually want to, what is it called? Uh, we want to add the Peter, we want to add Peter's name. So we forgot, we forgot to record that it's Peter who bought this. So you want to add Peter to the array. And then you want to add him in the right sequence. So right at the start, uh, customer, customer name. And then yeah, then you just add one more question mark. Right. So you realize that this is our latest entry and Peter bought one, one banana on day, day three. Yeah. So a sim this is actually a very simple just insert. It's typically your queries are like that. Nah. It's just that sometimes you have to manipulate your data when you insert or sometimes you have to manipulate your data when you enter it. But the act of inserting and writing is very easy. Yeah, sure. Right. Okay. About which part? Okay, okay. Uh, if you want to look at the, uh, if you are confused about code, this is actually the complete code. So under workshop code, this is a complete code. So you can just take a look at what we have recorded and see how the logic works. Uh. Okay. So now that we've done this, right, we want to move on to scenario three, right? So under here, scenario three, we, we run like, okay, so back in day one, Steve has actually forgot to buy, to pay for this cucumber that he has actually bought, right? And now he returns to the store and he pays for it. So the database needs to be updated to record this. And so we run into an issue because there is no item for. You cannot, our database does not allow our customer to buy a fourth item on the same day, which is stupid to say the least. Lah. But, so that's the limitation. So that's what we're going to do in the second segment, which is to what we call, uh, which is to actually create a database where your tables are separated, so you can actually allow for more flexibility. This is actually what we call normalization, which some of you might have heard before. The main goal of normalization is actually to reduce data redundancy, which is having the same data occur in the same place. Because in case your entry of data is wrong, right, the, the more times you enter a same data, the more likely you'll, create, you'll have a human error in recording at some point. So when you have human error, sometimes your updates might not be complete. So imagine you misspell one guy's name in one of the exchanges. Then you go and uh, do some manipulation with the data. You say delete stuff containing the guy's name. Then you actually have one data somewhere that you forgot to delete because it no longer has the exact same spelling, even though technically it belongs to him. Right? So now I actually realized one thing. So I would actually need you guys to delete this database, right? You just want to delete this database, go to this, this drive, right? You guys should have access to it, and just quickly download store, just download your storedatabase.db. Because I realized that actually yesterday we actually had some uh, sessions with this. So the database in, the note, in that notebook is actually not, how do you say, uh, not clean.
Okay. So after you have downloaded it, right, you just upload, upload the same database. So this is actually a good thing about uh, SQLite, is that in the sense that a backup function is very, very easy. You just copy it from somewhere and then you just paste it back in there and you're done. Yeah. Just upload and our database is brand new. Perfect. Okay. So now that we are using a new database for part two, right? Same thing, you want to create, a, you want to replace your connection with a new connection and a new cursor. So same thing, your, you write a connection equals to sqlite3.connect to our new database, which is uh, called a uh, store database.db, right? Same thing, create a connection. And you just run. Yeah. Yeah. So is everyone fine? Okay. No? So uh, if okay, so we just move on. Now that we created our connection, we want to then tackle our next. Ah, oh wait ah. Uh. Oh, sorry, sorry, no worry. We will just. Okay, I'll just take a quick look around and make sure that everything. Yes. We find here. Likely you have not okay bad database. Okay, so item this quantity where how to do rep text cannot hear, cannot do it. Rep uh, eh, I'm not very sure also. <laughs> Just run this one more time. And we don't have any. Okay. Uh, this is your files. Okay. We we'll just okay. No, but we'll just we'll just delete our database. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, we'll just delete our data. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll just. Have we we'll just use the backup to put in a brand new sure. database from the start? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So under our okay, hold on. So under here, this is our third one. So this is actually one good point about SQLite is that it's very easy to keep updates. You just have it stored somewhere, you just copy and paste, and then it's already run. So wait, no, run bad data. Download this, and at the same time, actually, we wanted to replace our storing data also. Okay. So save this one also. Maybe save it. Yeah. Okay. So over here, we actually want to upload. Right? Okay. So it's under this PC under download. So yeah, bad data, I'm going to open this. Yeah, so it's here. And uh, store, okay. This one, we want to delete it also. Because this one was actually from yesterday's session. So actually, all the changes have been made already. So same thing, update. Uh, store room data, yeah. Okay, so we just create the connection again and uh, run this one more time. Operational data, no such table. Original data. So funny, huh? But 
original data. Yeah, there isn't a spelling error. Original. Okay. Is this case sensitive? Yeah, it is case sensitive. Okay, we type yeah, but I believe you guys did type it. Oh, oops. But I believe you guys did type it correctly. Then what? We'll just copy the we'll just copy the query from yeah, yeah. the backup. Because uh, yeah. Aaron, are you okay so far? Yeah. You understand or not? Yeah. What's the purpose? You explain to me. Line by line, uh, eh. Line by line, uh, You must understand each line, uh, otherwise defeat the purpose. Huh? Line by line, what does it mean? What does the pur what is the purpose of each line? You must tell me, uh. The one Coding is like that, huh? No, no, you tell me which one. Uh, what does array equal to Peter all this? What does it mean? It's declared, yes. They declare that, okay, there's something new for Peter. Okay, data log. The second column is three. Imagine like Excel, right? Then the fourth column is banana. Okay. okay, so why sometimes in single code, sometimes it's double code? Oh, okay. okay, single so code. What is single code? Like? Single code and, and double, double code actually work the same way, but typically it's just to differentiate. So, in so case, case you have a double code and inside, inside you need to have the code again, right? Then you use single code. Okay. Or else you actually break up. Because the, the way the Python code will actually look as it will see what's in between two, two, uh, two codes of the same one. So if you have two, if you have two sets of double code inside, mm. whatever's in between that middle set will actually be the gone. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm not exactly sure why, <laughs> but uh, let's just we can just copy. We just we just we just, we just copy this from the backup one and uh, run yeah, yeah. this. Okay. Should be fine. See? Wow. Unexplained problem. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you look at it? Sorry, but is everyone else fine? You guys are all fine, right? Okay. If you are all fine, then we will move on. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this time, uh, in scenario four, right, we want to do the same thing as what we did in scenario one by using the new database. So new database is actually three different tables, right? three different tables, and each time is recorded more clearly. La. So if you want to change your customer name, it's just here. Now your, pro your product name is just here. Your, your detail of the product, so name and price. And if you want to change your, and, and what day is just stored. So each individual item and how many times it's bought, is stored as a separate, separate row. So you won't run out, you won't encounter that problem where you buy more than the number of stuff that your database has allowed you to. La. So, uh, okay, in this case, we want to use functions to write our code, because actually, when your code is like that, it's actually very simple for your person, so for, for whoever is using the code to modify. Yeah, like have a different query. So in this case, we'll just, our function this time is to do a view purchase, right? So we just use view purchase, and uh, you want to know what the customer name is, customer name is, and what day the person has bought it on. So in here. What day and what, right? So we realize that in this time, when you want to look at your records, right, it's not so straightforward to use your customer name because in this time it's customer ID. So you must first obtain this customer ID, which comes from your your table customer detail. So you want to select his name where we will select the ID where the name is equal to what the input name is. So mm, customer ID is equivalent uh, is is equal to uh dot execute select uh, select ah uh, yeah select customer ID from your table which is a customer detail where your customer name is equals to this case are So in this case, you want to create an empty tuple. Oh yeah, you want to create. Hold on. You want to create a completely empty tuple 
of uh, just your customer name. So just like that, customer, just a tuple of range one, because you have one question mark here. So you just want a tuple of length one. Then, same thing, since you know that there will only be one, since you know there will only be one ID for the one name, so you can do the same thing, customer ID equals to customer ID dot fetch one instead of fetch all, right? And to make it, okay, so to make it, to make it look nice, right? So, uh, So to, to see, okay, hold on. Ah, it's just name instead of customer name, so that's my bad. So, yeah. So you realize now it gives you a tuple of, of length one where your ID is two, right? So you want to make it like, you want to make this like look better, easier for your code to use. Just, just right at the side, just customer assign it to the index one, uh, index zero. So it will just return you this very nice digit two. Right. So next, you want to look into you want to look into your order detail. You want to look into your order record table for for columns where your ID. So columns where your okay. So column. Yeah. So you want to look for columns where is is two and it's also day one. Right. So you realize there are two over here. So. You will expect to see two things bought later. La. So you just uh, record equals to C dot execute select. Uh, so you want to select different things. In this case, you want to select uh, your item ID and your quantity. So these two. Right? So select item ID and quantity from what table? From order record. Where your customer ID equals to question mark. And this question mark is the same thing, empty tuple customer ID. Like that, right? So here you can print your record and see what it has written you. Oh, whoops. Ah, yeah, okay, so I didn't caps lock it here, so I shouldn't cap lock it here. ID, the D is so I'll just look at what exactly my database looks like. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's product ID instead of item ID, sorry. Product ID, right? So same thing, you get this weird, weird thing. And okay, so now, right, you know that, okay, so now you know that you actually have more than one row that you get, right? So this time we're gonna use fetch all. Ah, yeah, record dot fetch all. Dot fetch all, yeah. So this time you return two rows. So row one is where Row one is where the guy has bought item one and quantity four. Item one being a banana, so four bananas, same as, same as before. John, four bananas, right? Second one, ID five, two. And your ID five being cucumber, so two, two, two cucumbers, right? right? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is the same thing as before. We're going to make we're going to uh, append this into two different rows. So same thing, we just copy from over this, uh, just your quant, yeah, yeah, just get your quantity and your product name. Yeah, wait. This time is your product ID equals to what and your quantity equals to what. So same thing, I in range uh, length of uh, record, because you want to see how many rows there are. So you just, I arrange like that, and then uh, PID dot append record 
i. And you know the first position is your id, so i0. Same thing for record, for quantity. So quantity dot append record i position 1. Okay? So now you can print out your PID and your quantity to take a look at how it looks like. So quantity one, uh, ID one, quantity four, ID two, quantity, right? So now we want to get, so now we want to get the same output as we did before, right? We want to get this output where. Uh, Yeah, so you want to get this output where you know your name, you know the quantity, and you know the unit price, right? So therefore, when you come back here, you need to create, a, you need to connect again. So when you come back here, right, you want to use this product ID to obtain product ID to obtain the name and the price. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna select your product name and your price from your product info table. So end of this. Uh, P detail. Product detail equals to C dot execute select select what select product product name right yeah product name and your price from what they will from product detail from product info from product info where your product ID is equals to is equals to this is equal to this. So what is it equals to? It's equals to uh blank. Yeah. Detail is equal to. Okay. okay. So for here, you want to for for i in the range, you want to do this for the number of times for the number of products la. So i in range length PID length PID. So over here, you want to create a empty array for product name, and empty product for your price. Empty array for your price, right? So now, so when every time you search for one product ID, you'll get two, right? So same thing, p detail equals to this, but fetch one. Because in this case, there'll only be one row for one ID. So dot fetch one. And uh, every time you do this, you want to, you want to append into your p name, p name uh, append your ID row one position position zero. Same thing goes for your price. Row I position one. So you can bring out your P name. Ah, yeah. So I left this out, right? You want it to be PID, uh, PID I. Okay. Integer object is not scriptable. Oh. What did my PID look like again? <laughs> oh, it's been it's been a long day. So uh, ah yes, we don't we don't have to. Hey, do we? Ah yeah yeah, yeah I fetched one so there's actually no need to. Ah yeah 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 I, I sorry.
Okay, yeah, so banana and one, right? So you want to, uh, for another, for, for J in range length of your P detail, you want to do this two. So instead of I, you put J. detail p detail yeah sorry it's been a really long day and i'm starting to fall asleep <laughs> so is everyone clear on this part right is everyone fine so this part right you realize that it's starting to seem similar to the part where we have three called like a column uh, uh, an array and like everything is perfect right so you can just take you can basically you are basically doing the same thing now to calculate your sum right so your sum is equals to zero so you just here sum equals to zero equals to zero and you can just copy all of this you can just copy all of this because it's the same process running through your array and uh, seeing what it is just remember to change your name to the correct ones. So in this case, your yeah, p name is still p name. This time we don't need uh, we don't need an if condition, so that's good. We just print p name, your quantity, and your price. So same thing. So here you just print. Because basically you have gotten the same format of data before, which is three arrays or containing what length you are, containing what you have. So you can just copy the same code and just, just uh, get this. So now you have successfully gotten the same thing as before, but in a different format. I'll just walk around now and uh, see what. Yeah. Hmm? What thing? Hold on, I will look at her first. Okay. Error binding parameter is zero. I made a mistake because this scenario was supposed to be day equals to question mark. But this time we want a day because two conditions. We're gonna try to. Which one? Okay, it worked. Okay, yeah, don't worry. Copy them in PID. PID dot record. Okay, because this time right, your record is a fetch all, right? So you want it to look like. Yeah, you want to add. Huh? No, this time it's fetch all, right? Because yeah. Yeah. No worry. So it's I then let one correct one correct so you run this yeah so okay so this one ah yeah because you printed out PID I actually printed out a P name by this point so you just change it to P name and you'll actually be fine P name yeah yeah 
because okay, before before this right, so we are a bit we are a bit slow. But before this, I basically show you that we have actually obtained the this format, right? Which is similar to what we have done in this length of code, right? And since we have the same format, we can actually just copy this entire bunch of code down there and use the same thing over. But instead, this time because we don't have none, la, right? Remember before we had a none, none, none at the end, so actually we don't need the none. So you can just copy this entire chunk, right? Copy this entire chunk, come down here, replace your prints. So, okay, just be a format, just, just to make the indentation, right? Shift it in. Your this two is left out. It's left out of your sorry, hold on. Yeah, it's left out of your function. So that's why we need to get this and yeah. Okay. So on your side you have Okay. You are getting a Actually, we are ahead of schedule, so I can actually walk around and have a lot of If you have any problems, you can just ask me. Okay. Okay, hold on. Huh? Ah, patch off. You forgot your bracket. Bracket or patch off. Yeah. Okay, control and control. And see whether you get any other issue. There we go. So you can just clean up your, your debugging prints and it will be fine. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you can remove this tree. Yeah. Don't forget the part to where you print out your sum. So the last there's a last part at the front of our part where you say total amount spent, right? Let's scroll the right to the side. E even before. So this part we have a print total spend, right? So you want to include this in your this function. Okay, you can just run it. Yeah. Hold on. Total spend sum. Hmm. Ah, you want this sum, right, to be inside your this one. Yeah, or else, else your amount spent is different. Yeah, so you can just run it again. Should give you one point. Yeah, there we go. Okay. It's fine. Are you? Yeah. Okay. So, shall I move on to the other scenario, or we can wait a bit? Actually, technically, technically, the code here, yeah, yeah, is very different. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Like, I mean, like some of the namings will be different because I'm doing this live, but the logic is the same. So I'll move on to scenario 5 and 6. Okay. <coughs> so now that, right, now that we have finished scenario 5, 4, I assume no one has problems, right? Like, not anymore. If you, if you probably just raise your hand, uh, I mean, we're still uh, here, okay? Okay, then we'll move on to scenario five and six. Okay, so scenario five and six is basically, okay, so someone has forgot that they for, paid for an item they bought one day, and he returns to a store to repay for it, and now we need to update the database. Scenario six is that a person comes to a store and buys a number of items, right? So the issue with this is that, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to insert a brand new record to the database. So in this case, 
what you want to do is uh, okay so insert brand new cell okay a new function we want to call this function uh, insert new order so you want to look back here and you realize that you want what day the name of the person the quantity and the name the name of the item so day customer name quantity uh, product name hold on a little cool okay so here right so the issue with this is that sometimes right a customer will come in into your system and he will not have a he will be a new customer so new name so first we want to determine whether this person is new or not right so one way of doing this is to see whether he's searching his name actually appears at any point in that table so when you're looking at name you want to do a count equals to c dot execute c dot execute right uh, select so count bracket uh, from where count from your from the table uh, from the table customer detail where your name is equals to equals to question mark Yeah, C name. All right. So same thing. You know that okay, cost count is basically a it's just one number, uh, where, so how many how many times this person's did like columns that fulfill this, come out uh, So you can just do a count equals to count dot fetch one, right? And you can just print your count. So to test this, we will just run our new order. New order. So let's assume same thing lah. So on day three, day three, uh, say John, right? So John. Oh yeah. So on day one, John bought a uh, say, what what has he bought on day one? Okay, he has not bought a cucumber, so let's let's make him buy five cucumbers. Okay, so you run this, and it will tell us that John right has actually appeared in your in your customer one time, right? Which is correct lah, because he exists. So we change the name. Let's say Peter. Peter does not exist. So you see whether Peter exists. So it shows you that he doesn't exist. So we make our number, right? We make we make it a single number, and then we just do a very simple if condition. If the customer, if if your count is equals to zero, right? Then we will ask, we, then we will run a different query, a different function to record a new customer in. So new customer, like that, okay? Yeah, new customer and a C name. So this function has not been written yet, so we will just create the function now. So the eight new customer, right? Where C name is just C name. Okay? So very simply, we just do a execute insert into the database. C dot execute insert into customer detail values question mark okay yeah customer details question mark same thing single tuple like that so insert this will insert its name into the database <coughs> okay next we want to see whether the item exists right so the similar it's a similar process, so you can copy code from above to modify. So you want to select count from product information, right? Product info. Product 
info where what where your product name where your product name equals to p name same thing count equals to what so same thing if the item does not exist so we'll just new i new item p name p name so same thing similar function so you can just here new item p name okay but here comes the issue when you look at your product info right you realize there's this price field and you don't know the price of this object as this is a new item we can just do a one off ask what's the input required so you can have a uh, price equals to input just to ask the user enter enter price of item right like that so same thing enter into cut into product info Uh, wait, oh, here, customer detail name. Yeah. So here, product info, product name and price. And since you have two columns, two question marks. Two question marks. This time, P name and price. Like that. Okay, everything so far fine? So is everyone there? Fine. Seems like everyone's fine, so we will move on. Wait. No one, no one. I'll ask you. Uh, if you if you if you are like stuck somewhere, you all have to like kind of say la. Cause I can't I can't tell what your uh what stage you are. Okay. So shall we move on? Okay, let's move on to the next last section. So after this, right, you have actually determine whether your records and and whether your items are new, la, right? So you want to just do a very simple execute. Uh, see the execute, insert into your record, right? Into your record, this an order record insert into order record record this few entries so you want to start with uh, you want to you want to insert into order record your item ID and your quantity ID oh you want to yeah you want to enter into your item ID you want to enter item ID quantity and your customer ID and your day so we just go in this order insert into record item I item ID item id quantity uh, customer I id customer id and last but not least your day right so all of this right and what value same values four four columns so four question marks 
four question mark, right? And you can just end this. And you want to add in your array. So over here, your item ID is uh, Yes, we need. <laughs> yeah, so we realized that we actually forgot to get your item ID as well as your customer ID. So we want to just do a very quick select. So say you can actually copy from the front where, where you got down our customer ID, right? So you just customer ID like that. Come down here. Customer ID, but instead of customer name, you change it to C name. It's customer ID dot patch one. Same thing goes for your product ID. Select a product ID from product info by your product name. Name is what? and equals to p name. And since you know, same thing, since you know there's only one ID, so you just not fetch. Okay. So now that you've gotten these values, you know your quantity, which is from the start. So you can just start making your this one. So okay. And last but not least, you want to commit this. Just at the end, you want to print a. We just want to print a record. Recorded successfully. Recorded successfully. So you know that it has been saved, lah. So uh, yeah. Let's run this. Okay. All the record has no. All the record has no. Order record product ID, not item ID. So here, product ID. Yeah, and we're good. Right? Okay, so after this, right, let's just take a very quick look in our store. Okay, so we just look in our store, uh, store database, right, and we see the changes that we have made. Right, so over here, we, we realize that in customer detail, because it's Peter, right, so Peter has actually appeared, right? Cucumber, so it exists already. So we just look into our order record. Realize the last one, on day one, Custom ID say so Peter, Peter bought cucumber five, so five cucumber, right? So this time we will now we can test, right? Let's have a, uh, let's have Peter buy a different thing. Let's say ten uh, tomatoes, right? Tomatoes on day one or so, right? So if you run this, they will ask you to enter the price of your item. So this time we will just uh, give uh, your tomato a price of one. We we'll enter this, and it's recorded successfully. So when you download this again, right? Because you're committed, you download this again, and look. In product info, now you have a tomato, one dollar. 
right? And order record, last one, tomato, product ID of tomato, 6, 10, customer ID, 1. Okay? So, yeah. So, well, technically, with this, we have ended live coding. Don't worry. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, with this, we have actually ended our live coding session and, well, the workshop. So, if you want, actually, if you want to practice data SQL like any further, right, you can actually go to this link. So, it's a data camp, which is, well, an open source, like, learning course kind of place, lah. Then, uh, yeah, so, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll still, I'll still be hanging around to help you all 